The last transformation that we're going to talk about today is the warp transformation, and it's important to note that when you are applying a warp transformation, depending on the content upon which you are trying to apply the warp, your results are going to be different and your options available to applying a warp are going to be different. So warp can be applied as a preset. You can see the presets in the illustration below. There's arc, um, bulge, flag, weave, fish, etc. when you are applying it to text or to some sort of vector shape. When adjustments are made to a raster based selection or elements in the design, the change is applied manually and you can modify it yourself using anchor points and directional lines that control the curvature of the warp. And so the first example that I'm going to show you is that Jeeper, Jeepers Creeper Jeepers Creepers, I can't speak right now, the Jeepers Creepers image that we worked on in the previous slide when we talked about blending modes. And so I have text that's just kind of boring if we go back to that example, just kind of boring and it's straight, and I've decided that I want to modify it and kind of make it cool, but um, it would take a lot of work on my part to be able to curve this manually and modify anchor points and directional lines, and maybe I don't know a lot about that. Um, if, if I just know I want to kind of make it cool and fun, you can apply a warp transformation and you can find that under the edit menu transform and then warp and because I have a layer selected that's a vector art um, the options bar at the top of the screen has changed and now you can choose from the drop down and you can experiment with all these different warp options which will modify the text in a non-destructive way it could still highlight the words and change them but it just makes the appearance different it makes it look like a flag or a fisheye or it makes it look like it's puckered and different things like that and so you can see in these examples that with the same text, and I haven't done anything manually, all I did was kind of click through those different options, I now have basically four different options that I chose from this drop-down that might be appropriate for whatever I'm trying to create. And so maybe I like the arc, or maybe I like the flag, or maybe I like the fisheye. Um, but very quickly I can test all these different options without having to, having to create them in some sort of manual process. When you apply a warp transformation to a non-vector art selection, whether it's a selection or it's the entire image like it is here, you'll have the ability to modify the selection or the area using anchor points and directional lines to modify the warp in the picture. And so you basically, you can manually kind of twist and turn and pucker the image to your liking. And so in the textbook that we used to use for this class, they would take a stack of cups and kind of make them look like they're wonky. Almost like it's really popular to make birthday cakes where it looks like the layers of the cake are uneven and undistorted and warped. You could take a straight cake and you could make it look like that. And so if we go to Photoshop now, I can show you. This is the Jeepers Creepers image that we started in our lecture. And we could take the layer, the text layer that's been applied, and if we choose Edit, Free, Transform, and Warp, because we have a text-based or a vector-based layer selected, when we choose Warp, we don't get all those anchor points and lines that we could warp in and curve ourselves. Instead, if we look at the top of the screen along the application, or the, I'm sorry, the options bar, there's a warp option and there is an option to, or a drop down that allows you to choose all the different options. Now before I, I zoom out, I wanna show you there's a reference point here. The reference point is the point at which changes occur to an object. We have reference points in Illustrator and InDesign as well. And so depending on which reference point you have selected, the effect may look different. So we'll experiment by leaving it where it's at and clicking through, and so we have an arch, a lower arch. I don't mind that one so much. There's the flag, or the, where's the flag one? There's the flag that we have in our other example. You could do a fisheye, you could inflate the text, you could do a bunch of different things really quickly to kind of experiment and see if something works to your liking. Um, if we change the reference point, the, the result may look different. So this is, looks completely different than the first time we did rise because the reference point is different, so keep that in mind. Let's go back to the center rise. Oh, I didn't like it. Um, so you can change the reference point, which is the point at which it occurs, experiment, click around, click through, until you find something to your liking. Now, if you have a picture and you try to choose Edit, Transform, whoops, oh, so sorry. Um, I opened this image really fast before I started the lecture. You can't edit a background layer, and so I need to duplicate that, which is fine. So now we can choose Edit and then Transform, and now we can choose Warp. 
And when you do that, if you have a selection, or in our case, you don't have a selection, you just have an entire layer, um, you basically get a grid, and you can modify this grid to your liking. And so you could move the handlebars until you create something that works for you. You can grab the lines, and you can twist and warp and create your own custom warped design for your project. And one of the things that I kind of like about this is I could take what you would think of as um, an Andy Warhol image, right? These are soda cans, not soda cans, tomato cans that I bought at the grocery store a couple years ago. Um, Campbell's Soup came out with a, a line or uh, a limited edition version of their cans to have the same artwork as Andy Warhol cans, right? And so I could take an Andy Warhol inspired can and I could warp it and maybe make it look like something Salvador Dali would do. And when you're done, you have a custom result or, or design for your project or whatever you're working on. Okay, I would like you to experiment with both um, warping of a vector shape. Specifically try text, but if you're comfortable with more than text and you can create shapes in Photoshop before we learn about them, go ahead and make some shapes and then you can warp them that way. And then I would like you to try to warp a picture. Um, you don't have to be a master of the warping just yet. We'll, we'll get into that in more detail as the semester progresses. But I would like you to know where that option is and how to activate it inside of Photoshop. When you're done, you can move on to the next video and we'll finish up transformations.